Hey fam, welcome back. It is Marshawn, your favorite life and relationship strategist. And I'm here to talk to you today about toxic relationships. And I've talked about this topic before, but what is the first thing that comes to your mind when I bring up the phrase toxic relationships? Yeah, I'll wait. You can type it down in the comment section below. And if this is your very first time here, go ahead and hit the red subscribe button because here, my mission here is to teach you how to be in a loving, healthy relationship with yourself first and then with your partner or your spouse. Because if you don't take care of you, you cannot give all of you to someone else. If you are not healthy, you cannot expect to be in a healthy relationship. And those are the type of videos that I talk about on my channel. My channel is different because I'm talking about how to keep you in the relationship once you get there. And so if you want to be a part of my mission, then go ahead and hit the red subscribe button. Also, if you have any questions for me, anything that I have not covered that you would like for me to cover for you specifically, then send me an email. My email address is down in the um, description, which is Marshawn and MarshawnOlanio.com. Now, back to our regularly scheduled program. Maybe you have done typing what you need to say when I brought up the phrase toxic relationship. See, a lot of us think about arguing, fussing, and fighting all the time, which that is a part of being in a toxic relationship. Or maybe your first thought was abuse. Physical abuse is usually, when we say abuse, we're usually speaking about physical abuse. Maybe you're looking at that and saying that is a toxic relationship. And you would also be right. But today I want to focus on the things that you're not necessarily thinking about when you could be in a toxic relationship, maybe you're in a relationship with somebody who is emotionally unavailable to you, i.e. maybe you're dealing with a married man or maybe you're dealing with a married woman. But mm, usually that one is for women because men can deal with anybody and not be attached. Women can start off that way, but we always get attached. And so if you're dealing with a married married person, a married man who is literally un emotionally unavailable, then guess what you're doing? At some point, you're going with the flow. You're like, yeah, the sex is good. Or I'm protecting myself. I got hurt before. He's married. I ain't got to worry about all of that stuff. So you think that you're protecting yourself, but at some point, because you have let down your guard to a certain extent, he has really let down his guard because you guys have had the conversation about, you know, I'm married. I'm not leaving, blah, blah, blah. Y'all both doing y'all thing. But guess what? You're letting down your guard and you're listening to all the stuff that he has to say. And guess what you're doing? You are falling for him. So at some point, you fall for the guy and you want him to leave his relationship, his marriage for you. Don't do that to yourself. That's actually you being toxic to yourself. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do it to yourself. Now, I'm actually getting these points from a book called You Are Enough. I'm not going to go deep into what the book is about because I'm actually going to do a book review later on. But this is where she is speaking about... Um, okay, actually, this excerpt that I'm getting ready to share with you is from one of her other books. It's called Addicted to Pain, Renew Your Mind and Heal Your Spirit from a Toxic Relationship in 30 Days. That's where this excerpt is coming from. However, the book that I'm actually reading is another book of hers called You Are Enough. And the author is Rainey Howard, R-A-I-N-I-E Howard, if you're interested in picking it up. But again, I'm going to do a full book review on this, but I wanted to come here and talk to you about these points because maybe you didn't realize that you're actually in a toxic relationship because some of these things, you wouldn't, it wouldn't come to the forefront of your brain. So now we're going to go ahead and jump in. One of the first things is that maybe you're living in the past memories more than you're experiencing the present, what's actually happening right now. And so what that actually means is you got with this guy, you got with this girl, everything was peachy freaking king for the first three months. I'm talking about y'all calling each other all the time, y'all texting each other all the time, y'all got dates out of the wazoo, and then all of a sudden, everything stopped, or it comes to a halt, or the real person shows up, and then you stuck like, well, we used to be so happy. We used to have so many good times. We used to, we used to past... Are you staying stuck in your past? That's actually a part of being in a toxic mindset, really. You're in a toxic mindset and a toxic relationship because you're not able to give all of you 
to that person. And when you do, you find yourself being hurt more often than you are happy now. And so you keep living in the woulda, shoulda, couldas in the past and how everything was peachy. Everything was going smooth. Where did this person go? When are they going to go back? They're not. They're not going back. Because this person that they're showing right now is the true person. And what they showed you in the beginning was their representative. So maybe you are living in the past versus what is actually being presented to you currently or today. Another way that you are in a toxic relationship is that you keep justifying his or her bad habits, their bad behavior, their bad actions. And so maybe you guys are in a household together or um, um, you're at a party or some type of gathering, but you see that your guy or girl that's toxic is doing some crazy stuff, but you find yourself always apologizing for their bad behavior, their bad actions. And then you have to gather y'all together and then leave the party, leave the gathering. Oh, I'm so sorry. He ain't mean to do that. Like you, you spend all, you, you saying all of this stuff for him. No, you in a toxic relationship, boo. Maybe you don't realize it, but let's realize it today. You are. The third thing, which I actually already mentioned, but I'm going to make it a point to mention it here again, which is you experience more pain now than you are experiencing joy. You hurt more often than you're happy. Number four. Your partner is causing emotional, physical, or verbal pain, which we talked about abuse. So yes, we know that that's a part of a toxic relationship, but she brings it up here again, which is why I wanted to mention it. Number five, your values and beliefs are different from those of your partner. Now this becomes toxic because you, you find yourself going along with the flow of what somebody else believes to be right for themselves. And because you want to be a part of this relationship so badly, you find yourself believing the same thing, at least for a period of time and making excuses as to why you should do this thing this one time, or that, you know, it doesn't happen all the time, but let me go ahead and do it. Let's go for instance, to go with drugs, right? So drugs is not your thing. Drugs ain't your thing, but because you want this relationship so bad, your partner picked up a habit, whether it was with you or before you, doesn't matter. Your partner has this drug habit. And so because you really want this relationship to work, you start to believe that it's okay to do drugs with your spouse, with your partner, because you want the relationship so badly. That's not really what you believe that you should be doing. That's not a part of your core beliefs. That's not a part of your values. But guess what? You're going along with the program with somebody else's program, whether it's your, your fiance, your husband or your wife, your girlfriend and boyfriend, like whoever plan you're going along with, it's not yours. It's not yours. Toxicity. You're a part of a toxic relationship. When you can't think for yourself, when you can't stand up for yourself, when you cannot say no for yourself, this is not for me and walk away. The next one. You stay in the relationship because you expect things to get better. Now, this is actually a part of what I mentioned before, which really you're living up here because you're living in the past. You're hoping that that person that represented themselves in the beginning, again, their representative, is actually going to show back up. And so you consistently live in the past and expect things to go back to the way they were, expect things to get better. They're not. Because that person, your partner, was showing you the false person they weren't showing you their true being and now the person that you're seeing today you're not willing to accept them but you have to accept them for who they are and what's that saying go when a person shows you who you who they are believe them the first time don't give them chance at the 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 chance to keep breaking your heart to keep causing you pain which in reality sis in reality bruh you're actually causing and bringing the pain to yourself because for whatever reason you have not truly internalized the fact of how worthy you are how special you are how smart you are how you don't have to be a part of this toxic relationship how this is not the only person that's going to come and stay in your life like this is not the person that god meant for you it's not 
And so you have to accept that you are worthy. You have to believe it. And right now you don't believe it, which is why you're going along with the program. Maybe somebody really did program you and tell you that you want shit. You ain't going to be shit. And you really start to believe that you start to internalize that. So you're walking around with that. And so because you don't love and accept yourself, how can you expect somebody else to come in your life and give you that love and respect? They're actually treating you the way that you believe that you should be treated. So verbally you say one thing, but deep down inside what you're accepting is actually what you believe about yourself. Yeah, let that sink in. Let that sink in. The way somebody is treating you is what you believe deep down inside that you deserve. The next thing. Your partner puts little to no effort into the relationship. When they first did, because they were trying to get you, they were trying to get your attention, they were trying to make sure that you seen the best in them. Mm -mm. They put little to no effort. I'm talking about where, I actually just read where um, the late, the character in the book was basically allowing this guy that she knew got her co-worker pregnant. So first of all, they were a couple first and then, but they had a secret relationship. He ended up, I don't know how he met the co-worker, doesn't matter, but ended up having an outwardly relationship with the co-worker and end up getting the co-worker present, pregnant. The reason why I'm bringing that up is because the character that I'm talking about decided to still stay with him and only was allowing him, um, excuse me, was only yeah was allowing him to run the relationship in the in the fact that he was only seeing her twice a month and it's because she knew and it's because she didn't love herself she didn't she didn't respect herself enough because she was scared to let him go she was happy to have a tiny piece of him rather than not having any piece of him at all so little to no effort he was calling her whenever he felt like calling her he was seeing her whenever he felt like seeing her. And she was going along with the program because I don't want to lose him at all. So I'll see him once or twice a month. Instead of getting some self-esteem, instead of building her confidence, instead of knowing her worth and walking away and saying no, no, no. She was dealing with it. But he was giving little, he was putting in little to no effort. And after she found out that, you know, that the, the other co-worker really was the main girl, she still decided to stay. Are you in that same in that same predicament? Accepting the person's little to no effort that they're putting in to spend time with you when everything is on their terms, usually at night, every once in a while. You call and text all the time. They're not responding. You never see them. You they never um uh uh what's the word I'm looking for? They never um basically start it. You're always the one who's starting the phone calls. You're always the one who's starting the text. You're the person who reaches out all the time. And they do it. Eh, I'm bored today. Let me let me let me reach out to Sean. I'm bored today. Are you Sean in that story? The last thing. Your relationship, you are in a toxic relationship. If your relationship is actually holding you back and preventing both of you from growing as individuals. Now, can you change all of this stuff? Of course you can. However, if you want it to be a couple thing, then both of you have to decide to change. But can you change for yourself? Yes, you can. Can you stand up for yourself and say enough is enough? Yes, you can. Can you say hell to the now? Yes, you can. But it all starts with you. All of this starts with you loving you. You knowing your worth. You not accepting anything that is thrown your way just because. Does any of this resonate with you? Are you in a toxic relationship and didn't even know it? Let's hear what you have to say. I am waiting in the comment section below. Let's go ahead and continue the conversation. And again, if this is your very first time here or you've been coming here for several times, but you have yet to hit that red subscribe button, then definitely go ahead and do that. Or the icon with my lovely face because I'm setting, I'm setting y'all free. I'm giving you the truth and I'm setting you free. Are you ready to receive what it is that I have to 
serve to you. Think about it. Let's continue the conversation down below. I love you guys and there is nothing that you can do about it. I will see you in the next video. Deuces, y'all.